qui est valorisant quelque part, c'est qu'en fait... What's rewarding is that we're kind of like magicians who offer things up and find solutions. And so in the end, we find what we were looking for because we have the right supplies and the right colors. The result is always fantastic. Au final, le résultat est super. Have you ever wondered who is behind the hands that make fashion and luxury items every day? Behind every piece of clothing, every accessory and every object, there are men and women perpetrating these practices on a daily basis and passing down their passion. In this podcast, we will meet these lovers of know-how, the faceless people who hold precious knowledge on how to make the fashion and luxury items of tomorrow. Today, we go behind the scenes to hear from these men and women in the wings who will tell us about their profession, their passion, their desire to pass down a unique know-how. Because now, more than ever in France, we need to ensure the continuation of these exceptional professions. Welcome to the podcast Savoir pour faire. Bonjour, je viens voir Fanny pour Jean-Paul Gauthier. Merci. To enter the house of Jean-Paul Gauthier feels like walking into some kind of spectacle. And entering this personal haute couture studio in Paris is particularly exceptional. The Gauthier house is part of a very private club of design houses authorized to take advantage of the haute couture label. Located in the heart of Paris, some 20 artisans bring some of the most iconic contemporary French designs to life. All of this happens under the watchful eye of Fanny Tancelin and Amandine Gonnet, the first and second seamstresses in the workshop. And then there is Céline, Céline Tétedois. She is responsible for finding the workshop's materials and supplies amidst hundreds of samples of satin, tulle, buttons and boning. Céline is responsible for all the designer and the client requests, ensuring that no dream goes unrealized in the house of Jean-Paul Gauthier. Bonjour. Bonjour. Vous êtes Fanny C'est moi-même. Fanny Tincelin, première d'atelier. Une première d'atelier. Fanny Tincelin, the head seamstress. I managed the workshop in order to achieve two collections during the year. Could you explain the layout here before we meet Céline, who is currently deep inside the layer of Jean-Paul Gauthier? This is the first room where you'll find the design stylists working on the templates for the new models. This is where the clothing is made. There are also the people who work on mannequin molds for future collections and help bring the designer sketches to life. It's funny because I see mannequins and busts everywhere. It's kind of like Jean-Paul Gauthier's emblem and I thought I saw a few very big names around here. Can you explain it to me? Of course. We kind of have an archive of all our clients and stars. So it's really their bodies you're looking at, which is to say we take the measurements of our clients and make tailored models for each of them. And do you do something particular in this room? I have the designer sketches with all of the details and specs. I communicate all of this information to the design stylist with the designer's wishes and then all of the inspiration that goes along with it. Here, we have the entire plan for the collection. As you can see, we have the designer sketches as well as the fabrics and materials that he wants to use. Now we are in a very quiet room. I don't want to make too much noise. People are very concentrated in this room. I can see that. So where are we now? We are now in the workshop where all the seamstresses make the dresses and jackets. And are these unique pieces? Each piece is unique in the sense that a client orders a piece from the latest collection and we tell them make it. And what are these papers, for example? 
Here, I see. C- can you show me? We use this cardboard to get a sense of the model of the design. Here is a dress that is going to be completely made out of belts, and we're making the preliminary template out of cardboard. Ah, oh, but of course, that's the Jean-Paul Gaultier touch. So this piece is in the middle of being made? Yes, it's not a dress yet. It's still a mock-up for now. There will only be one like this, up until a client orders the piece and we make it to her measurements. And in that case, this also your responsibility? Absolutely, exactly. We produce the clothing that we make for our collections for the clients. It's funny because it's quite tidy here and at the same time you'd expect it look a bit more well. Uh, you think the workplace looks tidy? Yeah, it looks good. But I thought all those fabrics would have been in a beautiful armoire or, well, no, those are transparent boxes. Exactly. We can take a quick look at what's inside if you want. For example, we have our satin box, and when we need a little bit of fabric to make a mock-up, there they are. C'est de la récupération presque. It's almost like recycling or repurposing, isn't it? At first, yes. There's a bit of repurposing. We use all bits of fabric to make new design ideas. Afterwards, the designer will make the final fabric choice, which will be made and ordered specifically for the chosen piece. As far as my background goes, I arrived in the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier 23 years ago as an apprentice, première main flou. I evolved and then became a design stylist, and then the second seamstress. And there you have it. For the past two years, I am the lead seamstress at Jean-Paul Gaultier. Are you the one who takes the measurements? I take the measurements alongside Amandine, the second seamstress. Well, it sounds like I need to be introduced to Amandine. Before we go and see her, though, you have to explain something to me because it's completely... The scene I'm currently witnessing is pretty crazy. So here we have three people working on an embroidery drawing for a wedding dress. We're currently working on reproducing, in this case on plastic, but it's a template. All the dots of all the embroidery details that will be on the wedding veil so that the client can get an idea of what the final piece will look like. And so there are four people, in fact. What is their exact profession? There are currently three apprentices working here. This is Antonella, the workshop coordinator. And it's also a lot of exercise. She is working while standing on the table. You don't do it at 50% at Jean-Paul Gaultier. So now you introduce me to Amandine. This is Amandine, my second in command in the workshop. Hello, my name is Amandine Gonnet. I'm the second seamstress in haute couture at Jean-Paul Gaultier. So tell me, I now have a basic idea of what a first seamstress does. What does the second one do in the workshop? The second seamstress helps the first with organization, especially in relation to custom orders. There are a lot of questions to be considered as work on the garments progresses. So we are here to look over the models and the production process and make sure everything is going to plan and that everyone is on the same page. I follow you. So here we are preparing some templates. Now that Fanny is back to work, she can't hold the microphone. So Amandine, tell me a bit about what she's doing here. We are checking the muslin that we're going to put on the mannequin. 
We are also pinning a template to make sure all of the measurements and lines are in order before we cut the fabric to measure. Sont bien pour pouvoir après couper dans le tissu. Et vous, c'est quoi votre formation, enfin, et, et votre arrivée ici Vous pouvez me raconter un peu Ma formation, c'est oui. And what is your background Can you tell me a little bit about how you arrived here My background is pretty classic couture background. A BEP and then a CEP, which is similar to an undergraduate, and then an advanced degree. But I started with training in tailoring. There are two specialties in haute couture workshops. A tailor, and what is known as a flu or dressmaker. The tailor tends to work with more rigid, sturdy materials, jackets, coats, woolens. On the contrary, there is a flu, or even a grand flu, who focuses more on jerseys, muslins, dresses, and other materials that are lighter and more delicate. And so you were more of a tailor at first, right? I started at Gautier as a tailor, and afterwards, I saw these beautiful dresses coming through the workshop. Noise of the ironing in the ironing room. Little by little, it made me want to change my focus. And so I asked my workshop manager if it would be possible, little by little, to change expertise. And so I worked with the lead seamstress, who taught me the draping technique of Madame Gray. It was a dream. Ce qui est très intéressant, je trouve, c'est que on a What's quite interesting I found is that we really get the impression of being in a somewhat vintage workshop. Really? One can sense that these are unique and rare pieces here because in the end there are 22,000 ironing boards. This is part of the artisanal quality that remains in the world of haute couture and we try to keep it going by teaching our apprentices and our younger ones as well. Does that mean there is a lot of training? Is that very important to you here? Yes, definitely. We are in good shape. Currently, we have three apprentices. Speaking of fabrics and materials, I think it's time to go to see what's really... Ah, you're talking about the strategy of it all. <laughs> yeah, the very godmother of strategy, in fact. Will you introduce me to Céline? Yes, follow me. Même dans les couloirs, il y a des belles robes. <laughs> Even in the hallways, there are beautiful dresses everywhere and photos of celebrities. Ah, voilà Céline. Donc, voici le, ah, effectivement. This is where Céline walks. Ah, indeed. It's Alibaba's cave. Bonjour Céline. Alors moi, c'est Céline tête -Doie. My name is Céline Tête-Doie. I am responsible for all of the materials and supplies in the workshop, which combines a few different things. For the collection, I receive all of the fabrics and supplies, which I label and then stock. I also am in charge of production, which means anything to do with clientele and brides. And here I do research and I purchase materials. Maybe we can start with the beginning. What kind of training is necessary for the job? So initially, in fact, I wasn't at all associated with this kind of profession. I studied fashion design and I wanted to work in costume design. But then I realized it wasn't really what I wanted to do. And so I started doing internships. I found my first internship at John Galliano and worked in the center of the workshop where I was an assistant to the workshop director. In fact, I dabbled in everything, in model making, but also in materials and cutting. It's funny because in the end, oftentimes in these professions, training is obviously very important. But I get the impression that professional experience changes everything. Definitely. And that's exactly it. For me, when I was learning, I slowly discovered multiple professions, including the one I'm involved in now. I have worked with a lot of craftsmen, dyers, weavers, embroiders. And what I liked most was to be in contact with their work and all of the research that went around it. What do you mean by research? 
We go to suppliers who propose various materials and solutions according to the artistic director or client's wishes. Ce qui est intéressant, c'est qu'on rencontre le fournisseur et nous montre des matières. And in fact, what's most interesting about the experience is that when we meet the supplier, they show us the materials and other solutions to problems that may take some time to figure out. It's only by working together that we can end up with a beautiful result. Is it necessary to know everything about fabrics and buttons? Because here I can see a lot of boxes containing laces, etc., What I mean to say is there are a lot of things to be aware of. Is it necessary to know about all the colors, all the fabrics, as you had a dictionary or encyclopedia in your head? No, of course not. Because we learn something new every day. Even me, I'm still learning. Of course, it's important to be knowledgeable about various materials, to know which material we are talking about, what it's made out of, how it's made. You still need to have the basics, but afterwards, I learn new things because of the suppliers who tell me, check this out, I have an innovative new material. We discover new things every day. On découvre tous les jours. C'est quand même très organisé, non? Il faut, justement. It seems quite organized here, isn't it? Yes, it has to be, in fact. This is a place where we are constantly receiving a lot of things very fast and frequently, often at the same time. So you have to be organized. Okay, so first you order from the suppliers. In general, you know what you're looking for, right? Yes, generally. And then they arrive, and then you put them in the boxes just there? Exactly. I label them and check them, make sure that the fabric is in good shape. Does it come from everywhere or just from France? It generally comes from France or Italy, some from Japan, the United Kingdom. Okay, so now you're receiving them. I'm verifying the label, stocking it, and then either giving it directly to the workshop, if it's an urgent fabric for immediate use, or I make a note and put it away. Une utilisation directe, soit je le signale et je le range. Before continuing about the job itself, what is the relationship between the three of you with Fanny and Amandine? I mean, I get the impression that you can't really work or live without each other. Fanny and Amandine know about almost everything that goes on in the workshop. So in effect, I work very closely with them. I am always confirming things with them, asking them things, for example, how many meters of fabric we need for this coat and which colors should I order and from whom when there isn't a specific choice. I ask all of the specific questions about the design model too, because they are the ones who will receive the order and who will have to handle everything the director asks, as well as the client. I also work very closely with the sales department, which means the director and his assistant, for everything related to client orders, especially brides. Some clients come to our showroom and after a consultation or trying on a dress, they need samples. So everything is urgent here. We have to find the materials either here or elsewhere, and quite quickly too, so that the client can make a decision while they're here. Soit celle qu'on a ici, soit proposer autre chose, mais assez rapidement pour que la cliente puisse choisir en direct. D'accord. Alors, moi, je voudrais aujourd'hui une, une robe de mariée euh, blanche et verte. C'est comme ça que je me suis OK. So, let's take me as a client. I would like a white and green wedding dress. That's how I got married. With satin and a little green thread that passes beneath the satin. Okay, I will show you what we have. You see, everything is organized by material. So, you said you would like satin. Vous m'avez dit un satin. Wow, you found the specific green immediately. Incredible. Okay, so I am thinking more this one, number 3009. So here I can actually see the types of coloring I can offer. Afterwards, in accordance with the client's request, I immediately order the necessary products. I call my supplier and I place the order. Generally, when the client is here, we can show the client the color options in real time. Of course, like you showed me. And if ever the client needs to see or touch the fabric, I order samples from my supplier. 
Once we receive them, the director shows them directly to the client. I have a lot of lace and tool. Everything is sorted by material. You see all of those buttons? We've had that stock for a long time. Jean-Paul Gauthier, évidemment. Button signed by Jean-Paul Gauthier, obviously. Et alors là, il y a quoi aussi Les rubans Ah oui. Ah oui, il y a énormément de rubans. rubans. And what about here What is this Ribbons There are a lot of ribbons. Satin ribbons, velour ribbons. On a des baleines. Des baleines. Ah, bah oui, parce que chez Jean-Paul Gauthier, sans baleines. All of the strings arranged by color. We have zippers and boning. Oh yes, of course, because the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier without boning. Yes, a lot of boning. There are strings, laces, elastics, tough fabrics. The tough fabrics we use a lot too. So if I ask you for a small golden button, do you know where to find it? Yes. Wow. <laughs> La deuxième caverne Alibaba. Voilà, où euh, nous avons des cartons. It's the second cave of Alibaba. This is where we have a lot of boxes and where I store all of the research that I've done for clients, including samples, embroidery, feathers. It's like if you kept their specific tastes in your back pocket. They might evolve one day, but they will often still have a similar taste. Also because sometimes we retouch old models and so we can immediately find the materials associated with the client's name. This room is always locked with a key. Mais donc, euh, parce que depuis tout à l'heure, j'ai l'impression que finalement, c'est assez petit. But so, I get the feeling that in the end, it's quite small, when in fact, we are in a huge building. But you don't have everything here, right? No, this is just a small part of it. In fact, we have other storage facilities in the building. I have a lot of binders with samples of each fabric, including the references, as well as where each fabric is stored, I digitized the inventory, and in the studio, we have all of the fabric samplers. I have one here. I can show you. So this is a fabric sampler. This is a fabric sampler with all the references, the DNA of the fabric, if you will. This contains all of the necessary information. Reference. Alors bon, 86, 89. Tulle bleu à pois. Voilà. Métrage environ 20 mètres. So here we have references number 86-89, blue tulle with dots, length approximately 20 meters. So is that what you have left? Exactly. Qu'est-ce qu'il faut avoir comme qualité pour faire ce métier? Alors qualité, je dirais, il faut être très organisé. Ah bon? Dynamique. So what kind of qualities are necessary for this profession? Qualities. Um, I would say you have to be very well organized. No kidding. <laughs> Energetic. On the one hand, everyone in the workshop needs something from me. Comes asking me for materials, for this or that supply. But there are also urgent requests, especially when we're working on a collection and have production to do at the same time. When those two things coincide, you have to do both at the same time, so you have to know how to manage and prioritize. And since everything is urgent, you have to do one thing at a time. In the end, you have to work quite fast. I would say that it's a job that also requires an understanding of various materials and concepts. It's about learning all of the time and enjoying being in contact with suppliers and artisans. You also have to love to make things. But for that, I don't think there's any problem. Because in fact, we're also used to finding solutions in the immediate, It's about urgency. Sometimes you don't find an answer, and you have to find a plan A or a plan B. For example, you can't find a certain material, and you can't prepare the model if you don't have the material. So you have to go do research. 
It's happened to me in the past looking up things on the internet. Could you give me an example? For example, one time for a VIP client, we were looking for fishnet stockings that were a bit vintage, and it was impossible to find them anywhere around us, either in stores or even with my suppliers. So I went online and found what the client was looking for in England. You always have to be ready to adapt. Que quand on travaille pour une grande maison comme ça, on voit de temps en temps Monsieur Jean-Paul Gauthier. Oui, bien sûr. When you work for a big fashion house like this, do you run into Mr. Jean-Paul Gauthier from time to time? <laughs> yes, of course. He often passes by the workshop and generally stops by to say hello. He always has something nice to say and he sometimes looks at and even touches certain samples for special orders. For example, recently... We worked with Hazet Factory to give homage to Mr. Albert Elbaz. Jean-Paul Gauthier came to do research on materials, and we worked directly with him to find out the right samples and what kind of coloring he wanted. I think this particular job is a key part of it, because we work with everyone and are central to the process. Without us, nobody can prepare the clothing to put on the design models, nobody can provide the clients with designs, and we cannot make beautifully embroidered wedding dresses. So yes, in fact, I think we have an essential role in the process. Faire de belles robes de mariée brodées, euh, donc euh, effectivement, c'est un rôle un peu central. And so, that sound we just heard, you like that too? Yes, yes, definitely. Why? When you cut the material and open it up, you never know what you'll find, even if you have a general idea. So when you open the fabric and have it right in front of you, and cutting it with scissors, well, it's magic. C'est magic. If you're interested in becoming a materials and supply manager in Haute Couture, you can find various training courses on our website, savoirpourfaire.fr, and become a part of the luxury fashion industry.